I began building ukuleles in 1996 under the tutelage of Paul Peterson of Maui Ukulele, the Nahe Nahe brand ukuleles. Um, he took me as an apprentice and taught me the craft and I was uh, working, building all the custom instruments for his shop uh, for two years. And uh, once I left there, uh, he gave me a severance package of some wood and some tools because I still had the desire and the passion to build. Uh, so I kept that and uh, moved to the mainland, picked up some tools and a tool cart, and took some of the kits that he had given me and started building a few instruments there. Uh, but then upon arriving back here in Maui in 2008, kind of really started going full bore with it. Uh, got my website set up, put out a Facebook, uh, go to a shop on the weekends and uh, mill up kits and uh, work with a couple of other builders on the island. Um, so it's been about almost 15 years now that I've been doing this. I use a lot of different types of woods um, and they all pretty much produce different tonal qualities uh, in combination and in and of themselves uh, from Hawaiian koa to um, African mahoganies like sapele, uh, you have Honduran mahogany, um, walnut, uh, let's see, African cherry, uh, paduk, which is an African wood that's a really nice bright orange color. Uh, let's see, what else do I use? Ebony's, um, and also sometimes I do use a spruce and cedar top, uh, which when you get into using a spruce or cedar top, the cedar kind of mellows out the tone of the wood. So like for a koa, uh, they're uh, normally very bright toned and you pair that up with a cedar top and you get kind of a, a mellowness, a really jazzy type of sound to the koa. Uh, you take a mahogany, which has a warm tone to it. Uh, African cherry is fairly close to a mahogany. Um, I haven't actually completed an instrument with that yet, but just all the research and studies I've done on it is pretty close to the tonal qualities of a mahogany. So you're thinking more of a warm type of tone. Uh, walnut is a little more mellow of a tone, uh, but it does, it kind of in between mellow and bright. Um, actually the one that I'm building for this particular build is walnut, a Maui walnut. Uh, with a spruce top, so you kind of got a little bit of brightness, a little bit of clean clarity from the spruce, and you got the mellow, kind of in-between mellow bright from the walnut, which produces a really crisp, uh, very uh, forceful, kind of powerful type of sound. Uh, ebony is very dense, very hard, so um, it's more, uh, very, more bright, more attack, more projection from woods like that. Um, also use rosewoods, the East Indian rosewood, and that one is traditionally a guitar wood, uh, so it's like building a mini guitar, but that wood is uh, also a little more kind of on the in-between. Um, and a lot of these woods, it, it really depends on not only the woods that you use, but also the thicknesses that you go to with the woods, and also the bracing patterns, you know, the size of the sound hole, the depth of the body, so it's a bunch of different factors that you can use in combination with the wood that you use to produce a particular type of tone. So you know what I like, really? I think I like the R&D. I like the research and development. I like to experiment with different types of woods and seeing what I come up with as far as the tone. I like um, experimenting with bracing patterns and coming up with new and different bracing patterns that you know probably nobody ever thought of before, just to see what it'll sound like, just to see what it'll feel like, you know? And, Cause that is what really lends itself to the end product. So you could say the end product is what I really like because I like to hear what it sounds like when it's done, but there's all these different things that go into what it's gonna sound like when it's done. You know, you can change the size of the puka and that changes the tone, you know? But it's knowing that and having that knowledge and having that understanding and applying it 
and seeing exactly, okay, well, this is what I learned from some reading or something, or, or I was looking at some other guy's website and I saw that he does this, and oh, you know what, I wanna try that, but I wanna try it like this, and going into it. You know, I, I get passionate about this, if you can't tell, you know, gotta get a little smile on my face going, it's really good stuff. But, you know, that's what I really appreciate about it, because I can put myself into it. And it's like, um, uh, uh, it's like I put myself at the end, when the instrument's all done, like I'm standing inside of it and what does it look like? I'm standing inside of it and what does it sound like? So I kind of put myself inside of it prior to even starting the instrument to know what it's going to sound like, what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like when the person holds it in their hand. And I go from there. It's a spark. I start choosing woods. I start choosing accents. You know, do I want to throw a three-piece neck on this one? Do I want to put a wedge in it? How's that going to affect the tone? How is this going to affect the end result? So it's the R&D, but how that research and development lends itself to the finished product. That's what I really appreciate about it.